Hello. I've been working on the simple RPC layer in M Collector for the last couple of months. We're nearing the end of this work and we're really rounding off now with polishing the user interface and polishing integration between other tools like web interfaces and so forth. I wanted to do a quick video for you about the data definition language that I've added in 0.4.6 and that's being refined in the upcoming 0.4.7 release. So first a little information about the problem I'm solving. Um, at the moment, writing clients generally is a tedious approach. And we find that we mostly write clients because the default display or the default command line options doesn't really work for us. So a simple example would be, uh, I have a service agent and if I were to do um, a call to status on the service agent, you obviously want to see the response of the status. But up until this point, Simple RPC has had a assumption to only ever show you things that fail. Now, if the machine is able to retrieve the status of the HTTP service, which it generally is, you're not going to be seeing the status of the of the event. You basically have to go and add minus V and then you get this this kind of dump of a hash and it's not particularly user friendly because it, it looks like a hash has been dumped which is exactly what it is. So you end up writing a specific little script MC service um, like the one that we have that then basically goes and it knows that when you're asking for status it should always display running. Um, the, the detail that you've asked for. Now this is tedious. I mean you you don't need to run a specific script, a client, MC service just for this kind of a capability. So really what we want is better helper scripts. There's the print RPC helper in the RPC library that prints results and it should be better. Um, but it's a bit dumb today because it doesn't understand what it's looking at really. There's other, other areas that are strange, like I can send any any old rubbish in here, um, especially with the RPC command, and it will actually send it off to all the nodes, and the node needs to do the validation, and only when the node actually figures out, like, look, the information I'm passing it is bad, it shouldn't do it, um, it shouldn't do it. Only then do we know know that that um, validation has failed. And really, you want validation to happen on the client side before you send bad information to the to the nodes. There's other problems. Um, not so much of the service agent, perhaps, but there's a timeout issue. So most agents have a have a t short timeout, 20, 30 seconds. But there are cases like updating of packages where you'd have a very long update, uh, maybe up to two minutes. And the MCRPC script has no concept of how long it should wait. You would basically have to go and add here yeah, timeout 120 based on knowledge of the agent. Knowledge that generally is hard to come by because we don't have any integrated help from the agent. So really, the, the, the client side was fairly dumb and unknowledgeable about what's going on. Um, and this, this is basically the problem space. I'm trying to improve all of these things so that either the MCRPC on its own can be used more, or that you can use the print RPC helper to print results in a much saner way and it behaves in a better way that's more user friendly. Okay. So if we to slip over to a machine running um, a version of the upcoming release, and I just do this here. Um, doing exact same thing. Now remember in the old version, we would not have had any output because MCRPC is not aware of the fact that it should be showing me status details. But here we are, we are actually getting status output, and more importantly, we're getting status output presented in a human readable way. So already you can see this is improved. 
Um, what you cannot see here is that MCRPC has also set a appropriate timeout based on the service agent. So it would have waited exactly as long as it should have waited, not some default basically. So how does we achieve this? Um, this is basically down to the to the DL, DDL, stands for Data Definition Language. And if I look at the one from service, you can see that it's a uh, it's Ruby, it's valid Ruby code. There's a metadata section that has name, description, license. Um, this is the timeout, the crucial one that I mentioned. And then for every action, status action, a description. This is how it knows it should always display the results rather than just when there's something wrong. Um, some information about the inputs, some information about the outputs. This would be where service status came from in that in that user friendly output. And here is start, stop, restart, and they only the show show me failed results as as the defaults. So you need to create a file like this for every one of your of your agents and and we've made the agents a little bit different as well you can see this maps to the same syntax as that I showed you in the DDL and also this this is similar syntax over here again so what does this give me if I look at all the various areas I can do this first of all we can do help so if I do help on a service agent You can see I get a nice formatted help, um, where it's from, where the links, version, etc., and all the details about inputs and outputs. So, as a programmer trying to use an agent, anyone's agent, even one that I've downloaded from the internet, as long as it's a DDL, I get useful information. And of course, I've accessed the information in DDL programmatically, so you would be able to build user interfaces dynamically. Let's have a look at that might look. So here is a script that I have that calls the service agent. And as you have a look here, these are the actions available to me. Start, stop, status. And this is perfectly readable, human-friendly language. Um, and you can see from the help, restart the service description. And if you look here, restart the service. So this ties in with the DDL. And just to show you that it really is dynamic, if I fire up my IP tables agent, you'll see a, a different set of set of options. Okay, um, let's stick to the IP tables one actually. So the IP tables agent adds and remove IP addresses from a specific table in um, IP chains. And I will show you using this with my custom user interface that's a one-size-fits-all interface for all of the agents. So first of all, we want to have a look whether an IP address is blocked. It shows me all the machines this is covered. And it does a normal RPC request. Now, you can see here, it understands it needs to show me the results with a normal print RPC helper. This is down to the DDL having told it. And um, it's not currently blocked. So if we go and block it, again, give the IP address, yep. Now, as in the old days, it doesn't show me anything because all of the blocks were successful. If I were to do the block again, it's now gonna fail because it's already been blocked. And immediately you can see it's making it very, very clear that on a host, the request could not be completed and why it wasn't completed. And if we go and check the block status again, you can see it knows it's been blocked. And finally, we can unblock this IP address. Everything's good. Unblock it again. And now it'll fail and we'll get messages back. So this is kind of the advantage that the DDL brings you. Um, just to recover the agent knows about timeouts, validation of, of agents, actions, and inputs get happening automatically, and user interface gets generated automatically for you. So if we were to just have a look here, IP tables is 
blocked IP address. IP ADDR it should be, not IP address. So you can see uh, MCRPC has refused to send a request because I gave it bogus information. So now it's client side validation. If we do it again, and this is the same old information you're getting out from the previous script because this is the standard RPC caller in action. So that's the DDL. Um, the feature of this, we're gonna perhaps add some hints around packaging so that from a DDL file we can create RPMs or DEBs or whatever. We're gonna improve the input validations. We're gonna be able to fetch these things from a remote machine possibly. Um, I'll add some generators so that creating an agent will basically ask you a few questions and it will create you a blank DDL and a blank Ruby file for the agent to make it easier. Um, you should be able to add fire and forget request information into the DDL already. And we'll make some some converters to output this JSON or to output this as, as in any other format that we want to get access to. And yep, that's that's really the the DDL. I can perhaps quickly show you um, how easy it is to, to gain access to it through through Ruby. Um, because obviously we can access it in, in, um, programmatically. So as normal, we're going to make a IP tables agent, a client. And um, so we can do actions. This is all the available actions on the IP tables agent and we can do is blocked and there is a structure back from the DDL that tells me all of the relevant information about the is blocked action and this is basically the information that the script I showed you that's automatically generated use to create itself. So you can use this information from within a, a Rails web console or something like that to create dynamic user interfaces. Okay, so that's the DDL and I hope we'll see this as a standard feature in all upcoming agents from the community. Thank you very much.